June 5th through 10th, the six-day war of 1967. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. These are the seven things. Without them, no other signs meant a thing. There had to be these seven, and you're going to see why in a moment. We're going to back it and document it as well. So none of the signs really meant anything until 1948. Not until these seven things were in place. Right, right, all right. Let's take them now and see if they're in the global headlines, all right? The first two that has to do with a world dictator and a one world religion. Take a look at this, an anti-Israel president. And here you see it, Obama's diversionary tactics. Well, they don't look very happy there together when <laughs> Netanyahu came to the White House. Here, the unbridgeable Obama Netanyahu gap, a terrible gap between the two. And of course, Netanyahu came to speak to the Congress. And something wonderful happened a hard act to follow because there were many standing ovations as he spoke to our Congress. Well received, but there's a big gap between our president and the Prime Minister, Jack. All right, that's sign number one. There had to be a leader of the new world order, and Henry Kissinger says we've been preparing Obama to become that leader, and of course that leader will be against Israel, as you're going to see, and this is the most anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish president in history. But we find that when he comes to power in Revelation 13:1, he comes in on a peace platform. He already controls the world, verse 7. Has power over all kindred tongues, people, and nations. And now he says, I'm going to make the peace. And isn't it strange that the Muslim nations are all asking for our president to come and set up the peace? Why? They know it's going to benefit them. All right. He comes in peaceably, Daniel 11:21. He enters in peaceably, Daniel 11:24, and makes a seven year contract with Israel the Arabs, the Muslims, all the nations of the world, Daniel 9.27. But it's not going to last, as we'll see. All right. There you have a world dictator. Now, how about a world religion? Is that really, really possible? Dr. Hutchings, as you well know, wrote a very good book, Dark Side of the Purpose Driven Church. And he's talking about Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Church, and he speaks about the darkness of it. Well, just before... This is dynamite, Yes, Rexel. well, just before Dave Wilkerson passed away in an automobile accident uh, just recently, he wrote a letter to Dr. Hutchings. I'd like for you to read this with me. Your article concerning Rick Warren's ministry is one of the most balanced exposés of what I see as a very dangerous movement. I find no animosity in what you have said, and I believe it is a message that every pastor around the world needs to hear. As I've traveled the world the last two years in ministers' conferences, I've seen the havoc which that ministry has caused. In South Africa, one pastor spent six weeks preaching from Rick Warren's book. Most of the well-grounded pillars left the church, and it's floundering. We find the same everywhere we go. It simply does not work. I've ordered 100 copies of Pickyback, Saddleback, and plan to send them to my bishop friends and all the nations we've been to. God bless you for taking this stand that is not popular and one that I believe truly pleases the Lord. May the Spirit of the Lord give you strength and courage. Well said, my brother, his bond servant, David Wilkerson. David Wilkerson. What a man of God. Oh, he was. Both of these men. Yes, and he, well spoken there, wasn't it, Jack? Oh, I've been telling you, and I'm going to repeat it because repetition is a great teacher. Just June 26, 2011, religious groups met in 26 states to begin unifying Christianity and Islam. Now we find in Revelation 13, 11, that the second leader, world leader, arises and he heads up all religions. And he has the two horns of a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. The two horns of a lamb identify him with Christianity, for Christ is the Lamb of God. Uh, the dragon identifies him with satanic 
purposes. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing worse in the world than uniting Christianity, the real Christianity, with Islam because they take every stand they get against Christ. And I'm going to say it over and over and over until the whole world gets it in their minds. Here is what they teach. The prophet Jesus comes back. He says, I'm not a god. I'm not deity. I did not die on a cross. I faked it all. I become a Muslim while I was gone. I'm here as an evangelist for Allah, and I'm smashing every cross because that means victory over Islam, and it's going to be the victory of Islam over Christianity. I, Christ, your Christ, the Muslim Christ, will help see that it occurs, and I will put to death every Jew and Christian who won't convert. That is what's beginning right now. Be careful, my friend. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you receive, and avoid them. Avoid them. And I'm telling you, Rick Warren's going to be in trouble when he sees God. All right, Jack, we're going to quickly uh, refer to the rest of all those seven very, very quickly. But first of all, I want to draw your attention to the last 10 days on this wonderful, wonderful offer. And it is New World Order Rising, Dictator of the New World Order. Take a look at this, please. The New World Order, the final sign preceding Christ's return, was predicted by St. Jerome 1,600 years ago. The fulfillment began on May 1st, 1776 in Germany, as the Illuminati reared its ugly head. Out of this movement sprang six global organizations, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergs, the United Nations, and the New Age movement, all promoting a one-world government. In 1933, the announcement of this New World Order appeared on the back of the American dollar. How would it begin? By creating a global economic crisis. It's happened. Next, the Bilderberg's plan is the microchipping of the world's citizens by 2017. Recently, Henry Kissinger, advisor to numerous presidents, stated, Obama is primed to create the New World Order. He added, we must forge ahead or retreat to chaos. Find out more who, what, where, when, and why. This is a very, very special offer because it is a special edition to this set. And everything we've said on here today is explained more thoroughly on here, Oh, Jack. you can really hear four hours of study. This originally went for $50, now for a donation of $34.95. It's yours. And listen, 120,000 people ordered it. It's that important. Oh, there's the 800 number again. Oh, please do make that call. And also, there's the address. As soon as we hear from you, we'll get this in the mail. A lot of people have asked me about that. Is it really possible to have a new world order dictator and a new world order rising? Is that really possible? Absolutely. We'll explain it on here. So make the call. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Now, friends, whoo! We always run out of time. We enjoy being with you so very, very much. But I'm going to put all those other headlines on pertaining to the rest of the signs that Jesus gave to us. Jack enumerated up front. Let's take a look. Here you see if Putin decides to retake the presidency. That just happened this past May. Russia flexes nuclear muscle on Victory Day. Again, Russia Army to receive advanced weapons in 2011. Russia to develop new ballistic missile system by 2013. You know what? We're letting ours down and they're building theirs up. Russia to start building new S-500 air defense missiles by 2014. Russia's military space activity increases. Now let's go to China. China will pursue powerful military. Again, China's hostile space capabilities worry the United States. Army phone links China and Russia. They are buddies. And Russian Chinese presidents support Iran's nuclear rights. Let's go to Iran. Iran's Ahmadinejad in new tirade against who? Israel. And again, dozens of missiles could hit Tel Aviv and Jerusalem in next war. Well, you know what? That just was stated in June of this year, and they're talking about war against Israel. All right, Jay. Right. Signs three and four. The Bible teaches World War Three is coming, and Russia will lead it. 
In fact, in Ezekiel 38, verses 1, 2, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, all cities in Russia now fight the war of the latter years and latter days, verses 8 and 16. They are defeated in chapter 39. I'm against the old Gog, the Russian prince of Moscow, and Tobol. I'll turn you back, leave a, a sixth part of the, and it takes 12 months to bury them, verse 12. That's the first invasion. Then there's the second invasion as China comes down. They are united, as you saw on the headlines. And this is Revelation 16, 12. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. So the kings of the east, the sun rising, China and the oriental hordes move toward the Middle East. And by the way of the Euphrates River, where men are now stationed in Iraq. Not only that, but it's the greatest war in history, Revelation 9, 14. He says, loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates to slay one-third part of mankind. How? By the fire, smoke, and brimstone, nuclear warfare. And that fails. And finally, all nations come against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2. All right, let's look now at sign number five. As said it earlier, Iran says, I'm going to get rid of every Jew and unless I Get rid of them. My Messiah, Mukti, will not come with our prophet Jesus. And he wants to fulfill Psalm 83, 4. Let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. Science 6 and 7, there had to be an Israel, Matthew 24, 32, and there was no Israel for 1,878 years. Why did there have to be an Israel? Because the invasion of Israel by Russia and China is mentioned 18 times. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. And there had to be a Jerusalem, which they took over June 5th through 10th, 1967. The Six-Day War. Why? Because the war begins when they invade Israel because they divided Jerusalem, and our president wants to give Jerusalem to the Muslims. It's coming, Joel 3, verse 2. There are the seven signs. Christ could not come until they were here. Oh, Jack, you know, all that says to me, I need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. How about you? Maybe you're mixed up in some of the things we've talked about, the alcohol or or the drugs, or pornography, or whatever. God will forgive you. How about the invitation, Jack? Oh, I'm going to calm down here. What a precious Jesus. And he wants to save you. He loves you. And look at me right now. How do you get saved? Just asking him into your heart. When you do, you become a son of God, or daughter of God. John 1, 12. Receive him now, Lord Jesus. Precious Jesus loving Jesus. Oh, suffering Jesus from my sin. I love you. And I'm asking you now to come into my heart, to come into my life. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me. As I, as I repent, save me now. In your holy name, amen. Amen. Oh, I trust you prayed that prayer. I did many years ago, and I was so forgiven of everything that I had done, and so have you. Write to me. I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. Please write me a note. Now, here's our announcer to tell you about this wonderful two-disc edition. Chuck? My friend, to order your copy of the New World Order combination set on DVD or VHS, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $34.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Call today, Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and do call today. A limited offer, so there's the number. Make the call. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Or write to us. We'll send it to you. And now, friends, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought from my heart to yours. Running from God is futile. Running to God brings forgiveness. Look forward to being your home again next week. And remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.